family in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is not how we planned on worshiping today, but we are happy to be um, in the house of the Lord because every house that, that is inhabited by God is his house. And so we know that he is here with us. We unfortunately um, are not in our church today as we had planned on because um, our choir director, Dominique, has been exposed to COVID-19. She does have symptoms, even though she hasn't got the test back. Um, so we're praying if she does have it, that she recovers soon. Uh, for the safety and for precautions of everyone, uh, we wanted to be sure that we uh, all stayed home today and that we're able to worship together. We encourage you to enjoy this service, follow along with us, and uh, we will be, uh, the sermon will be live via Facebook, either before this or after this, however that goes. Uh, be patient with us as we go forward, because the most important thing is not that we get everything right. We are here to glorify God. I thank you for the leaders and all of the uh, workers who have made this possible. Uh, we threw this together uh, on Saturday, um, and not threw it together, but we made it happen on Saturday. <laughs> we found out about the illness, and so we wanted to just move forward and make sure that we did not let anything get in the way of praising the Lord. So this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God. Good morning, College Hill. Call to worship. Welcome friends to this holy day. We come to offer thanks. We come to sing and pray. Welcome friends to this time set apart. A time to remember those we love and time to remember the holy promise of God. Welcome friends to this table of remembrance and joy, the table where we are fed, the feast we share with many. Welcome friends and let us worship God. Buenos dias College Hill. Bienvenidos amigos y amigas a este santo día. Venimos a dar gracias. Venimos a cantar y orar. Bienvenidos amigos y amigas a este tiempo que reservamos, un momento para recordar a los que amamos y para recordar las promesas de Dios. Bienvenidos, amigos y amigas, a esta mesa donde están presentes el recuerdo y la alegría. La mesa donde nos alimentan, la fiesta que compartimos con muchos. Bienvenidos, amigos y amigas, Adoremos a Dios. Thank you, Sister Marva Gray and Brother Larry Holler for leading in this. Uh, we will now have our uh, Old Testament scripture reading led by Sister Marva Gray. Old Testament reading is Psalms 107, 1 through 9. Say thank you to the Lord for being so good, for always being so loving and kind. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. Tell others he has saved you from your enemies. He brought the exiles back from the furthest corners of the earth. They were wandering homeless in the desert, hungry and thirsty and faint. Lord, help, they cried, and he did. He led them straight to safety and a place to live. Oh, that these men would praise the Lord for his loving kindness and for all of his wonderful deeds. For he satisfies the thirsty soul and fills the hungry soul with good. We'll now have our opening prayer. Please pray with me as I pray for all of us. Oh Lord, our good shepherd, you are the source of all true and lasting joy. We praise you for your power, which is beyond compare. We worship you for your wisdom, which is beyond understanding. You can meet all our needs. You restore the brokenhearted and heal the wounded. You have revealed yourself to your people and are building your church in the world against which the gates of hell cannot prevail. How great you are, Lord. Fill our hearts with love as we respond by worshiping you, not only on Sunday, but every day of our, of our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Por favor, oremos juntos. Oh Señor, nuestro buen pastor, eres la fuente de toda alegría, verdadera y duradera. 
Te alabamos por tu poder, que es insuperable. Te adoramos por tu sabiduría, que está más allá de la comprensión. Tú satisfaces todas nuestras necesidades. Restauras a los desconsolados y curas a los heridos. Te has revelado a tu pueblo y estás construyendo la iglesia en el mundo, contra la cual las puertas del infierno no pueden prevalecer. ¡Qué bueno eres, Señor! Llena nuestro corazón de amor para responder a tu llamado, adorándote no solo los domingos, sino todos los días de nuestra vida. Por medio de Jesucristo, nuestro Señor, oramos. Amén. Amén. Now we invite you to join us for praise and worship led by Sister Quanteria Dargan and Brother Al Martino Dargan. Enjoy and praise the Lord as we worship together.
wherever God is just to see his glory what an incredible thing and he's all places at all times um, in case you're just joining us this is again a reminder that we did not expect to be worshiping like this but our choir director has been exposed to COVID and very likely has it so we're worshiping um, online from our houses um, but God is with us wherever we are uh, we invite you to participate with us uh, you should see the words on the screen as we proceed um, as we try to, um, well, not as we try, as we move forward in our prayer of confession, hopefully in unity. Our world stands in need of reconciliation in Christ. Let us pray together our prayer of confession, remaining confident in God's forgiving grace. Almighty God. Almighty God. We enter, we enter your presence, your presence confessing the things, the things we, we try to conceal from, from you and the and things, things we try to conceal from others. others. We, confess we confess the heartbreak, heartbreak worry, and, and sorrow, sorrow we have caused, we have caused that, that make, make it difficult, difficult for others, others to, to forgive, forgive us. us. The time we have made it easy for, for others, to, others, do others to do wrong. The harm the we harm have done, done that, that makes, it, makes hard it hard for us to hard. forgive us to ourselves. ourselves. Lord, Lord have mercy and, and forgive, forgive us. us. Forgive us. Through Christ. Through Christ. Amen. 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 Nuestro mundo necesita ser reconciliado con Cristo. Elevemos juntos una oración de confesión de pecados, confiando en la gracia indulgente de Dios. Dios Todopoderoso, Entramos en tu presencia confesando las cosas que tratamos de ocultarte y las cosas que tratamos de ocultar a los demás. Confesamos la angustia, la preocupación y el dolor que hemos causado, que hacen que sea difícil para los demás perdonarnos. Las veces que hemos hecho que sea más fácil para los demás hacer mal. El daño que hemos hecho, que nos hace difícil perdonarnos a nosotros mismos. Señor, ten piedad 
y perdónanos a través de Cristo nuestro Señor. Amén. 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 Friends, you have been called and claimed by the God of all things and by the abundance of God's grace. By the power of God's love, your sins have been forgiven. In the name of Jesus, we declare. Amen. 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 Amigos y amigas, hemos sido llamados y reclamados por el Dios de todas las cosas y por la abundancia de la gracia de Dios, por el poder del amor de Dios. Nuestros pecados han sido perdonados. En el nombre de Jesús lo declaramos. Amén. 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 Okay, so um, I don't have a lot of announcements to make uh, today. Uh, we are, we will be in touch as to how we're going to proceed this coming Sunday because we have asked our worship leaders all to um, self-quarantine for 14 days or take uh, COVID tests um, by 10 days. Uh, we will be able to better say what's going to happen. We will communicate to you uh, through one call, email, on our Facebook, um, and we continue to call the office if you need to, to reach out. Uh, we remain available to you. Uh, we're just not sure how we're going to proceed this coming Sunday. Um, the worship, the, the sanctuary has been set up, set up beautifully. I've seen pictures of everything that's been done and, and everything has been marked off. So we are prepared to worship when the time is ready. But until then, We will we'll continue to communicate this way, so be, be sure to reach out if you're in need of help, and we will try to reach out to you as well to be sure that everyone is doing well. If we have any um, visitors, we, we welcome you to our service. Uh, we no longer have our parking lot service as the weather has dr driven us inside. We are prepared to worship inside safely, social distancing. We have um, all kinds of COVID precautions in place. And so we will move on that when we're available. We're so happy to have you visiting and worshiping with us. We hope you enjoy the service, even as we're um, doing it right now. Um, I, are there any other are there any other announcements anyone can think of that I am not bringing up right now? Okay. Then, as we uh, welcome our visitors, we also uh, greet each other in the peace of Christ. Um, even though we can't touch, haven't been able to for a while, I welcome you to share the peace of Jesus Christ be with you. Peace Amen. be with you. It is time for our offerings to be presented, and um, <clears throat> this is different again. Let us come joyfully and in thanksgiving to God as we prepare to bring our tithes and offerings. As we are unable to be inside, it is important that we do not forget our uh, responsibility and our privilege um, to be a part of God's kingdom building. Of course, today's offering will be a little different. We ask that you prepare your offering now if you are able. After the service, you may send it directly to College Hill Church at 1547 Philadelphia Drive, Dayton, Ohio, 45426. Or you can also give through our cash app on our, web, on our website uh, or Facebook page. And for those who are willing, we ask for a small donation above your normal tithes and offerings on this first Sunday for our first fruits offering, which is designated um, to go to our local food pantry. Please give as you are able, for there are many in need of help. Vengamos con alegría en, y en acción de gracias a Dios mientras nos preparamos para traer nuestros diezmos y ofrendas. Como no pe podemos estar dentro del templo, es importante que no olvidemos nuestra ofrenda a Dios para ser usada en la construcción del reino. Por supuesto, la ofrenda de hoy será un poco diferente. Le pedimos que prepare su ofrenda ahora. Después del servicio, 
Puede enviarlo directamente a College Hill Church, 1547 Philadelphia Drive, Dayton, Ohio, 45406. That's 45406. O donar a través de Cash App en nuestro sitio web o Facebook. Para aquellos de ustedes que estén dispuestos, les pedimos una pequeña donación por encima de sus diezmos y ofrendas normales para ser distinguidos, uh, desti designados para nuestra ofrenda de primeros frutos que de se destina a nuestra despensa de alimentos local. Por favor, de lo que pueda, porque hay muchos que necesitan ayuda. Okay, I believe I gave out the wrong zip code. I think it should be 45406. Mm -hmm. um, so that correction, I've been giving it the wrong zip code out for a while. My apologies. All right, won't you pray with me? Faithful Lord, we thank you that you give the gift of abundant and eternal life. Your generosity overflows to us. Everything that we have is a gift from you. As we bring our offerings, Lord, we just thank you. As we bring our offerings, we give them back to you from the abundant blessings that you have given us. May our gifts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our God. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and strength be unto you, our God, forever and ever. And we know that it overflows to us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Señor fiel, gracias por el don de la vida abundante y eterna. Tu generosidad se desborda hacia nosotros. Todo lo que tenemos es un regalo de tus manos. Al presentarte nuestras ofrendas, te devolvemos un poco de las abundantes bendiciones que nos has dado. Que nuestros dones sean aceptables delante de tus ojos, oh Señor nuestro. A ti, toda la gloria, sabiduría y acción de gracias, honor, poder y fuerza. Eres nuestro Dios por siempre y para siempre. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Amén. Amen. We will now have our New Testament scripture reading presented to us by Dr. Charles Williams. Good morning, College Hill. Once more, it is always a privilege and a blessing to read to you the Word of God. As we all know, there are four Gospels, the four Gospels. However, the first three are referred to as the, the synoptic gospels because what they do is they give us a synopsis of the life and the mission of Jesus Christ. And the fourth one, though, completes what we call the canonical gospels from which we get our canon. Now, John is a lot different. John is much more theological. Uh, a lot of the content from the Synoptic Gospels are there, but there's more of a theological interpretation of the ministry of Jesus Christ. And in the, today's reading from the 16th chapter, verses 25 through 33, we see a theological orientation to the disciples. Now, as I've often said, the disciples were caught up in something they didn't know what was going on. But in John, what we see is Christ is getting the disciples theologically ready for what is about ready to happen. This is right before the Passover and the crucifixion and the resurrection. And all along, he's been trying to get the disciples ready for this. And he's telling them that there's going to be great sorrow, but there's going to be joy. 
And he's telling them, I'm going to leave you, but then I'll be back to be with you again. And there's going to be something wonderful. It's going to be called the Holy Spirit that's going to come and comfort you. And what we see in this orientation is this theological preparation, peace for the disciples. Now Christ says, I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I'll no longer speak to you in figures, but will tell you plainly of the Father. On that day you will ask in my name. I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into this world. Again, I'm leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, yes, now you're speaking plainly, not in any figure of speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need to have anyone question you. By this, we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them. Do you now believe? The hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered, each one to his home, and you will leave me alone. Yet, I'm not alone because the Father is with me. I've said this to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world, you face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. Thus says the word of God for the people of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be God. Thanks be God. We're in celebration of that incredible word, that reminder that no matter what's going on, even right now, when Amen. we are unable to make it back into our church, even right now, as we are posed and getting ready for uh, voting, even right now in the midst of a pandemic, even right now, no matter what's going on, if you're dealing with grief or whatever that is, Jesus has conquered the world. The world. What an incredible assurance from God. We Amen. now have an opportunity for another um, celebration of music from uh, Quantaria and Brother Al Martino Dargan. Thank you. Thank you. 
Amen. 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 That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. Thank you. How can we not say, Lord, give me you? That's all amen. we need. If you remember from last week, all of the love songs that we talked about. Mm -hmm. Of course, we <laughs> want to talk about, Lord, give me you. Amen. All right. So um, I'm not exactly sure how this will happen, if this is the end of the service at the moment, or if you'll be instructed to pause it. Um, but what will happen to right now normally would be the sermon that will be live on Facebook tomorrow. So if, uh, if, if this is your opportunity to pause, we invite you to pause, um, go to the face, go to Facebook live to find, um, go to Facebook college Hill church. Greetings, saints, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am trying to adjust to uh, Facebook Live as this has been my first time actually doing a sermon this way. But it is a blessing to see the dawning of another new day, to have rested in the care of God through the night and being able to rise again in his presence. And on today with daylight savings time having begun, Hopefully you're feeling even a little bit more well-rested. Before we go any further, won't you pray with me? Father, I stretch my hand to thee, no other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, wherever would I go? Most gracious and loving God, Lord, we give you thanks and praise. Before we ask for anything, we have to thank you for everything, for being such a mighty good God, for being our father, our mother, our keeper, our protector, our provider, for being all of the things that we need and more. Lord, we thank you for being such a mighty good God. We thank you for loving us when we're unlovable. We thank you for having faith in us when no one else did. We thank you for not giving up on us. Lord, we thank you for loving and caring for us. We thank you for the gift of your son for us. And even on today, Lord, even when things have gone differently than we planned, Lord, we know that you are still in control. So we ask that you be with us as we go through this worship service, Lord, that you use me, hide me behind your cross, that no other word but yours go forth. Lord, that you touch everybody wherever they are with your Holy Spirit, that to your glory now and forevermore, and let the saints say amen. Um, we have uh, some other recordings, the beginning of the service and the end of the service that you can refer to on the College Hill um, website and Facebook page. So we encourage you to do that. But since all you have right now is me, I guess you're stuck with uh, maybe just a little bit of us praising the Lord together. Hopefully this is a song that you know and will sing along with me. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear our humble cries while on others thou art calling do not pass us by we're calling Savior say Our humble cries while on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. I would like to talk to you today, today from the theme, blessed even when it doesn't feel like it. Blessed even when it doesn't feel like it. If you are watching this message live on Facebook, for some of you, it is not much of a change. For you've gotten used to enjoying the worship from your home. And we are glad that even in your houses, we have been able to share the gospel of Christ with you. 
I have to admit that there are there's something to this staying in the 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 warmth of your home as I hear the wind outside and I know that it's cold and praising the Lord in your pajamas and with a cup of coffee and maybe some toast if that's what you want to do. There is something to this being able to just be able to praise God right where you are, not having gotten in your uh, in your cars or gotten up to do anything. There's something to that, so I'm not going to complain about it. But this is not my first preference, because many of us, for many others, this is not what our plan was for today. For we have been busy planning and preparing for this first Sunday in November. We have been, we were getting ready for our first inside worship service since the pandemic. We had it all worked out. We had every other pew marked off. We, we had six foot distancing signs marked all over the sanctuary and then even outside. We had masks for anyone who needed them. We had our thermometers to take temperatures. We even had, had plexiglass shields made to place in front of the speakers and the singers just to add an additional layer of protection. And on this past Thursday, we had a run through with our worship leaders and Sunday servants to make sure that everyone knew where to be and what to do. We were all set. But have you heard that saying that people say when, when people make plans, God laughs? You know, we should have known that everything would not be quite so easy. Because a lot of times the measure of something important is in the difficulty in obtaining it. For great rewards are not usually given easily, but are won by those who are willing to tirelessly pursue their goals. So we have suffered a setback, but not a shutdown. For if you have not already heard, my own daughter and our choir director, Dominique Worthen, was exposed to COVID-19 as we discovered her boyfriend Cameron tested positive for the virus on Friday. Now, while her test results are not yet in, by Saturday, Sister Dominique was already experiencing um, symptoms and she had a fever. Now, I have to tell you that as a mother, a lot goes through your mind. And then as the pastor of someone that you love, when you get this sort of news, I had to admit the first thing that hit me was panic. Concern about what was going to happen to my daughter, to my family. Was she going to be all right? Was he going to be all right? What was gonna happen now? And, and anybody who's been in that situation when you've known somebody that you love and you know that they're suffering and there's nothing that you can do about it, it can break you down. It, it, it can worry you. It can stress you. It, it, it can get you so that you don't know what to do next. Immediately, my mind went toward thinking, how could this have happened? We've been so careful. And then, and then I started thinking, why did this happen to my daughter? And, and I have to admit, saints, that I, I had my own little pity party for a moment to which no one else was invited. I was all by myself and I was able to just say, why God? And you know, how could this happen? And I, I, I just don't understand. But at which point the Holy Spirit reminded me, why not my daughter? Why not my family or even me? Did I expect that we would be exempt from a pandemic just because we were serving God? Did I expect that just because we were saved that we would not suffer? And so I, I got up off of the ground and I dusted myself off and I, I did what pastors often do even when we don't feel like it. I began to praise the Lord. And once I thanked him and praised him and, and, and put my daughter in his hands, I began to troubleshoot and started working on what I could do to regroup. And so I thought about how to make worship happen differently than how we had expected, because if I had let the enemy take over my thoughts and steal my hope, I could easily still be right there wringing my hands and worrying about what was going to happen next. Or, or, or I could be productive, right? And I could do something about what I could control and let God take care of the rest. Because here's the thing, I can't control a virus, neither can you, especially one of pandemic proportions. No matter how much we plan and how careful we are, 
if we are going to live through this pandemic, we will be put at risk virtually every day. From going to grocery stores or gas stations, to going to restaurants or just getting takeout or even having food delivered to our houses, somebody has to make it, somebody has to touch it to going to something as simple as to a doctor's visit, visit or a checkup because we're trying to stay healthy, right? To visiting the dentist to keep our teeth together or to the eye doctor to be sure that we can see, to getting your hair cut, dyed, washed, set, whatever it is that you do, or those of you who, who don't wanna let your nails go, to getting a, 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 a manicure or pedicure, to letting the youth go to school, uh, whether it's a hybrid or staying home or, or actually going out or playing in sports or by going to work, ju just driving on the road, whether voting in person or by absentee ballot, chances are you have to touch something someone else has touched. If you're visiting a friend, a friend or a family member, as the holidays get closer, regardless of whatever it is that you choose to do, this pandemic is not going away anytime soon, for this is a marathon, not a sprint. And everyone is at risk, whether we want to be or not. Not to mention that people are still getting hurt and even dying every day from things that have nothing to do with COVID. I mean, there's still cancer, there's still diabetes and Alzheimer's, heart disease and infant mortality, poverty and systemic uh, racism and classism. There's still car accidents and violent crime and trying to make Black Lives Matter too. There's hurricanes and tornadoes, wildfires and floods. No matter where you live, how you live or what you do, living is a risk every day. So the question is not whether or not we eliminate all risk because we can't. The real question is how do we deal with the risk of everyday living and not get overwhelmed, overstressed, or filled with fear? And the question and the answer to that question lies in another question. Where do we put our faith? In God or in ourselves? Do we really trust him to be in control? And if we do, then do we really think that because we serve God, that nothing hard or harmful will ever touch us? Or instead, do we expect trouble and trials to come, yet face them with confidence, knowing that God is bigger than any problem or obstacle that we could ever face? That brings me to our sermonic scripture for today. Believe it or not, I, I was just getting started, but if you will walk with me for a little while longer, we're going to finish with a shout and with joy, amen? From the gospel according to Matthew chapter five, the gospel according to Matthew chapter five, Jesus, we're told, had just begun his earthly ministry. In chapter four, we are told that Jesus called his disciples and he was teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and, and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. So, so, so his fame had spread throughout all of Syria and they brought him to all of the sick, those who were afflicted with various diseases and pains, you know, those who had COVID, those who had diabetes, those who had cancer, those who had Alzheimer's, those who had Parkinson's, those who had MS, they were bringing them all. They said demoniacs, epileptics, and paralytics, and Jesus cured them. And we're told that great crowds followed him from Galilee, the, De the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. Thus, at the beginning of chapter 5, the word says, beginning in verse one and going through verse 12 of gospel of the, Math, the gospel of Matthew chapter five. The word says, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and he taught them saying, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, they will be comforted. 
We know many people who are mourning right now. We know many people who might be poor in spirit. Right now, suicide is, is high because of people just being left alone and the fear of all that they're going through. But yet he said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. He said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. I think a lot of us are thirsting and hungering for righteousness right now. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Forgive those and you will be forgiven. Show mercy and mercy will be given unto you. He said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. See, protests aren't, aren't about violence. They're about peacemaking. Blessed are the peacemakers. Peacemakers between these parties that are fighting back and forth. And, and, and not even caring about what's best for everyone, but just fighting to show who's more wrong. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the scripture which I had planned on preaching today, knowing that we were heading toward election day this Tuesday. But as my eyes and my mind were set on the election, and as we were steadily and prayerfully planning and preparing for moving inside of the church this weekend, as I said before, I received my own surprise to hear that my own daughter had likely contracted COVID, which caused us to have to um, have everyone who was a part of, of, of the run through uh, to self quarantine for the next 14 days or until we have all tested negative within 10 days. That was the real surprise. And, and, and as I said, <laughs> We were still, we were, we had, we had to still keep it moving, even though that that happened. I, I got the news late Friday night, but anybody knows that when, when trouble comes, life doesn't stop and say, hey, hold on. She's got a problem. He's got a problem. So let's wait on anything until they're ready. It doesn't. We had to keep moving because church services don't happen on their own. And, and I chose to be a part of the planning, even knowing what was going on with my own family, because I had to put my daughter in God's hands and, and take care of the other stuff that he had put me in charge of. Because once, as a parent, once I have done all that I can do, Make sure that she has medicine and juice and soup and some of the things, you know, make sure that she she has everything that she's need. I've prayed with her. Then there, there's some things I've made, her, you know, made her comfortable as I possibly can. But there are things that as a parent or as a person that we cannot control for what God allows. He has already prepared for. So there are some things that you have to trust him with even when you don't understand what he's doing. It's easy, easy to say, why God? It's easy to say, why me or why this? But, 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 but you know, because nobody wants to deal with sickness of a loved one. Nobody wants their own health to be in jeopardy. No one wants poverty. No one wants violence or persecution. No one wants trials and troubles. But as we have already acknowledged, whether we want them or not, they are going to happen one way or another. But how we handle our problems is actually just as important as finding the solutions. Because while you're in it, and I mean in the midst of your troubles and your storms, while the seas of life are raging around you, as the thunder roars and the lightning flashes, giving signals that trouble is all around you with no end in sight, how you handle problems is an indication of your level of trust and faith in God. At the first sign of trouble is the first place we go to complain, 
God, I don't deserve this. Why does this happen? Or is it fear? What's going to happen? Lord, I don't understand. I, I, I'm afraid I'm not going to move. Or is it anger? I don't deserve this. Why did this happen to me? Or, or, or is it worry or trepidation? Well, if we, it, it, you know, to be human, if we admit we all have those instances, let's be clear, right? The, the, those that the flesh often takes over first, and that might be the first response that you get. But if you're a person of faith, if we trust in God, the answer is no, those are not our responses because Jesus is with us. Now, that might not have made any of you shout right away. It made me shout hallelujah, because sometimes we don't realize the blessings that we have until we embrace what is around us. In this ancient gospel in the Bible, the Israelites, the chosen people of God, you know, the religious folk, the church members, they had been waiting for deliverance from a savior. And they expected that once he arrived, he would change their situations. They believed that once the Messiah showed up, they would be again delivered into a land flowing of milk and honey, that they would be restored to the promised land that had been set aside for them when they would rule once more. They expected that the Savior would destroy their enemies, that they would no longer be persecuted by their government. Come on now, that the Messiah would rid them of racist, sexist, and class-driven policies, that the haves would no longer profit to the de detriment of the have-nots. They expected that the coming of the Messiah, that, that, that with him here, that unfair laws would be abolished finally, and that financial shackles would be loosed, that unemployment would be at an all-time low. They were hoping that all sickness and illness would be cured. They were hoping that the pandemics would go away, that peace would come over the land and we wouldn't have to fight in protest to save black and, black and brown lives. They all hoped that the people of God would be relieved of their suffering. And they thought that this utopia would, would rush in like a wave and, and God would have taken care of all of their problems. So, so the surprise that once Jesus actually comes, they begin to, to suspect that he is the Messiah that, he, that, that they've been waiting for, you know, before he goes further in his ministry, Jesus has to set some things straight. He takes the disciples to the side and he explains to anybody who will listen that the deliverance that they were expecting is not going to happen exactly the way that they had planned. Do you know that you cannot tell job, you cannot tell uh, God how to do his job? I'm going to say that again. We cannot tell God how to do his job. We get in our mind how things are supposed to happen. And when it doesn't go the way that we plan, all of a sudden we want to say, God didn't deliver. You should have gone to job. You should have gone to God first to find out what he had in store. Because in fact, Jesus had to tell them that, and they would soon find out that their troubles were off, that were not only going to, they were not going to go away right away, but that their troubles were often vehicles that God would use to guide them to a place of blessing. It was important for the disciples and for the people of faith to understand this because faith is designed to precede breakthroughs. Faith is designed to proceed, to come before your breakthroughs. God will do what he says he will do, but faith is what keeps you until God delivers on his word. Faith is what you hold on to when no solution can be found. Faith is what keeps you when you feel like you can't handle another day in your situation. Faith is what chases fear away when there is every indication to be afraid. Faith is what, what motivates you to, to keep moving when everybody else says give up. Faith is what gives you peace, even in the worst, worst of circumstances. Faith is what keeps you when deliverance is nowhere in sight. Faith is what you hold on to when you have nothing else. Faith is what will keep you when you've got nobody else to encourage you. Faith will allow you to keep moving, keep holding, keep, to keep trusting, keep believing. Faith is what blesses us. Faith is for those times that even though God promised it, you don't feel 
blessed. In this fifth chapter of Matthew, in the Sermon on the Mount, often called the Beatitudes, Jesus spoke a sermon that didn't make any logical sense. I didn't say any spiritual sense, right? It didn't, might not make any sense with the world. It might not make sense with the politicians or the mathematicians or the scientists. It did not make any logical sense unless you had faith. For, for, for he lifted up terrible and trying circumstances as instances of blessing. Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted. But one has to ask, how can people who are suffering or dealing with trouble like that be blessed? How can dealing with all of this sort of stuff be a blessing? Well, it, 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 it goes to how you look at things. It, it, it's when, you know, people, some people say your glass is half empty or your glass is half full. It's in your perspective. First is we already know that until Jesus comes again for the final time, until then, there will be suffering trials and tribulations in the world that there's no way around it people have made a mess of creation some did it purposely others have done it unknowingly or unwillingly but we have all been a part at some point we have all turned a blind eye to suffering at some time We've all been a part of pollution and global warming. We have not stood up against injustice when it didn't impact us. We have been complacent and failed to help others who have been left behind. We have held grudges and resentment in our hearts against people who have wronged us and we have been unforgiving and, and, and unloving. We have been selfish with what we have, hoarding our blessings for fear that we might run short. All you've got to do is go to Kroger's or Walmart or your local grocery store and see the empty shelves to know that people are more about taking care of themselves than they are leaving something behind for others. We've been guilty of walking past people in poverty. We do it all the time. They're at the exits at our highways or uh, they're along the streets or, or or not wanting to get involved in other people's fights. We, we know something's going on. We know something's wrong, but that's in another state. That's in another country. We don't want to get involved in somebody else's stuff. So we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And this world has suffered because of it. And as a result, there are a lot of terrible things that go on in the world because of centuries of bad decisions and ones that are continuing to be made each and every day. But the joy about God is that when he sent Jesus, he was meant to be the light in a dark world. Jesus came to bring hope that through faith we would be delivered. Not only would we make it into heaven, but also that the kingdom of God can be experienced even right here on earth. That the blessing of God is that he rewards those that have faith and trust in him. We don't have to wait till we get to heaven. That's a wonderful thing to know that day when we don't have to deal with illness or, or sickness or tears or crying. That's that's a wonderful thing, but we got to know how our faith is going to carry us right now today in this world that we live in and that we won't go crazy. We won't lose our heads, right? We need to know how to have our joy and our peace in the midst of everything that's going on. We have to know that suffering is not an indication that God is not present with us, but it is a promise that if we continue to serve him, he will ultimately deliver us. And that promise is the reason enough to praise him. Somebody should have said, amen. Jesus said, blessed are those who suffer. But watch this, don't get it twisted. Blessed in this gospel originally written in the Greek doesn't mean that you have exactly what you want. Because if you did, you would not be suffering. But blessed here is translated to mean that even though your circumstances have not changed yet, and I did say yet, although you are yet in the midst of your own mess, despite all that is going on around you and being done to you, 
Blessed means you are, watch this, spiritually prosperous, happy, to be admired, refreshed by God's grace, inwardly peaceful, spiritually secure, worthy of respect, joyful, nourished by God's goodness, content, sheltered by God's promises, anticipating God's presence, spiritually mature, and I'm not even done yet. You, you know, blessed means you are comforted by inner peace and God's love, morally courageous, not having a spirit of fear, but of power and strength and of a sound mind and spiritually alive with life and the joy in God's goodness. Therefore, according to Jesus, if you have faith, you are all of these things before God ever does anything to change your circumstances. That's why I can praise and I can shout even right now. Somebody might have been praying for me and said, oh, Pastor Worthen, poor Pastor Worthen, her family, they got COVID and all what's going on. And that's all right because God is in control. I can shout and I can go forward right now with a smile on my, fi on my face, not pretending that everything's all right, but knowing that everything's all right because God is in control. I don't care what happens. There's a reason if we say neither life nor death and all of the principalities and rulers and all of the things, neither height nor death, nothing can separate us from the love of God, then how can we not shout and praise God no matter what's going on? That's the true test of faith. If we're willing to trust him, even when we can't trace him, if we're willing to praise him, even when he hasn't delivered on what it is that we've asked for, even when we have every reason to be afraid, every reason to be threatened, every reason to not have hope, we still have hope. That's what it means to be blessed, even in the midst of, even when you don't feel like it, you are blessed, happy and confident in who you are and whose you are. Because rather than waiting on heaven, rather than waiting on being delivered, we have to know that God has already shown up in Jesus. See, when you talk about going to heaven and getting to the kingdom of God, the scripture tells us that when Jesus came in the flesh to the earth, he delivered on God's promise to bring heaven, to, to bring heaven to us, to bring the kingdom of God. We will, we will all be in, in God's kingdom one day, but there's a kingdom on earth that we get to share of. In Luke chapter 17, verses 20 and 21, it says that... Um, uh, Jesus was being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come. And he answered them, the kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is. Don't expect somebody to say the kingdom of God is coming. You, you better pay attention for yourself. You better look with your spiritual eyes because he said, for behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. If you have Jesus in your heart and in your life, the king of, kingdom of God is already here. Isaiah prophesied about this in chapter nine, verses six and seven. He said, because, you know, as we're going into, into Advent, celebrating the birth of Christ one more time, he said what to expect. He said, for to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government, come on now, you need to know that the government will hear this. The government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. See, there's two governments. There's the one of this world and then there's God's government. See, I wanna serve in God's government. I don't wanna be a politician here, even though I might be called to do it one day, who knows, but there's something to be a part of God's government because you can bring justice, you can bring uh, equity, you can bring equality, you can put ends to things in God's government. He says that of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. We were blessed with the blessing of God, the promise of God when Jesus came. But also we have to remember, God is in the process of saving the world one person at a time. God is in the process of saving the world one person at a time. If we just trust in Jesus, even when it doesn't 
feel like it. We have every reason to be happy, to be confident, to be secure in knowing that we, we may not know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. You should be able to shout right now, even though we're not where we expected to be, even though plans have changed, even though that there might be things come against, coming against us, even though you might be suffering with whatever your own personal storm is right now, God is in charge. As I lift up my daughter and her boyfriend, that will now make it into the pandemic numbers that I see on television, that we see on television every day. And, 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 and as those numbers are growing, but like I said, not just COVID, as people are falling ill to all kinds of virus and illness, yet we are blessed. As we prepare to go into this election and you know how hard it's been, and if you haven't voted yet, Pull yourself together, be prepared for those lines, have a plan, do whatever you're going to do, because we need to do our part to make a difference in this world. But we have to know that no matter who makes it to, into office, because know this, no matter who gets elected, there's going to be trouble. There's going to be people upset. No matter who gets voted into office, no matter who is chosen, somebody's going to be saying it was the wrong person. And oh, we got to look forward to four years or four more years, however you want to look at it, uh, uh, of more trouble. No matter who makes it into office, we are still blessed. And as we prepare to move to inside worship, yes, even now, even know what, even knowing what's happened, <laughs> I'm telling you, not everybody will, not everybody will be able to make it in. Not everybody can make it in to a church service. And we understand that. But of the things that I'm willing to risk life and limb for, Jesus is one of them. And however we can, as carefully as we can, we will continue to share the light of the world in the parking lot, through technology, in person, you know, whatever, however, we have to just keep on keeping on. And whether it feels like it or not, we are blessed. Do what you can, even right now, wherever you are, to advance the kingdom, to make a difference in the world. But what we cannot control, and there are some things that we cannot control, and that's all right, because if we trust God to take care of the rest, then everything will be all right. Let's stop trying to do God's job. What we can't control, <laughs> I'm happy to know, is in capable hands of the master. In the meantime, let us not weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not, for we are always blessed, even when we don't always feel like it. That's the word for today. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to join on the Facebook Live or that you're able to um, review this sometime later. There are additional recordings as a part of this service that will allow you to have communion in your own home. And, and so we just invite you to go to those. There's, there's music, there's prayers, there's songs um, that are not live that you can go back and look on yourself. We did that yesterday in anticipation of today. And we thank God for the technology that has made it possible. And on there, I'm going to do now what I would do then. Open the doors of the church. And when I say open the doors of the church, I mean open the doors to the kingdom. If there's someone, someone who is yet to yield to Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, then I don't know how you're making it without him. You can squeak by the prodigal son did for a long time, but at some point a reckoning does come. At some point we have to take account of our lives and what we're doing and, and decide if we want to do this by ourselves. Because Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. We can't do this on our own. And the key is that while, while others may choose to, to, to count on themselves, to trust in themselves and get let down time and time again, if we put our trust in God, we know that everything will be all right. So even right there in the safety and comfort of your home, if you will just open your, your heart 
to the Lord. If you will just give in to him, submit your life to him, I promise falling in love with Jesus will be the best thing that you could ever do. And you'll find that even when trouble comes, it's okay. We know that the rain falls on the righteous and the unrighteous, but God is an umbrella and a, and a rain jacket that can make it durable to get through. So even when it doesn't feel like it, you can be blessed. You just confess with your mouth, believe with your heart, and you will be saved. That Jesus is the son of God, that there is one God and Jesus is the son of God who died for our sins. So that gives you grace, that gives you mercy, that gives you access to salvation, that gives you joy, that gives you peace, that gives you power, that gives you strength, that gives you renewal, that gives you refreshment, that gives you everything that you need. Because if you have the bread from heaven and, and you drink from the living water, you don't have to hunger or thirst. You can do that even right now in your home. If you're looking for a church home, um, if not next Sunday, we will be open again. Um, and we plan on going back inside. We hope those of you who can safely do this will join us. And those that cannot, we continue to reach out to you. And we hope that you continue to reach out to us because we are joined together, not only through technology, but more importantly, through the spirit of God. And most of all, remember, if you don't, if you don't remember anything else, remember that you are blessed even when you don't feel like it. Be blessed and enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, the rest of your life until we meet again. In Jesus' name, let the saints say amen. Going forth, we just want to extend Jesus to anyone and everyone, because even over this, even over the technological airways, even when we're not gathered together, Jesus is with us. We offer Christ. There's somebody out there that might feel alone, might feel lonely, might feel vulnerable, doesn't feel like somebody cares or anybody cares, but God loves you and so do we. God is a loving God. And even in the midst of all of the um, craziness that's going on in this election and in, in, in the midst of the sickness and in the midst of losing people and people suffering, God is still on the throne and he's here and he hears us when we call on him. So we offer Christ to you. All you have to do is even right now in your own house, in your own room, is to just submit to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. The Bible tells us that if we will confess with our mouth and believe with our hearts, we will be saved. We offer Christ to you. If you would do that right now, then God receives you and you are um, a child of God and welcomed into the family and are received. If you would like to join, if you're looking for a church home, we invite you um, to look no further. Reach out to College Hill via email or phone and we'll be happy to receive you. But most of all, what we most care about is that you know that the love of Christ belongs to each and every person. With that pause, as you consider that, we're gonna actually just take five, 10 seconds, just pause and let you think about, just listen for God's voice. Here I'm calling to you right now, if you would just submit to him. Amen. Amen. All right, as we prepare for the prayers of community of the community, we would like to lift up. Um, I would like to lift up a few people when I invite those on the line to invite um, to lift up others as well. Uh, so the Max family of uh, the Lakes family um, lift up uh, Sister Kathy Lakes. Her sister Laura uh, went to the hospital, I believe, with a blood clot and then has since um, also um, contracted COVID. And she's gone back and forth from the hospital and we're just praying um, for, for her health and healing. Uh, we lift up um, Brother Max, uh, youngest brother who suffered a stroke um, and pray for his healing now in the name of Jesus. We lift up his youngest brother, Hilton, um, who is uh, suffering from breathing issues that are not uh, COVID related. So we lift up the entire Max family. I lift up my own family, again, my daughter, Dominique, who um, is likely to have COVID right now, her boyfriend, Cameron Turner, who has tested positive, and we're praying for their healing in the name of Jesus and that it doesn't spread any further than that. They do have, he has uh, roommates there at Miami 
university. So we're praying that that does not get contracted further than that. We pray for all those that might be dealing with COVID. We lift up those that are dealing with all kinds of health issues. We lift up um, Brother Larone, uh, Jack, Jacqueline McKenzie's son. I was able to visit him um, uh, at Miami Valley after a car accident and um, he fractured both arms, both legs, several ribs. Um, he had a chest tube and even then um, he was a pleasure to visit. He's a fighter and he was strong and is encouraged, but he will be, uh, once he gets released in rehabilitation for quite some time and his mother Jacqueline was already recovering from knee replacement. So we lift them up. Uh, we lift up all of the uh, children if they are out for beggars night tonight. Um, we just just lift up their safety that the Lord covered them. Are there others that need to? Oh, there's there's and if anyone can remind me, I did receive an email. I cannot recall the name of um, one of our brothers that was killed. I want to say in Colombia, um, he was um, he was uh, assassinated. I believe I don't know his name. I don't know their circumstances. If anybody else does, um, but the, the Lord knows. And I invite any of you who have anything that they would like to lift up. Pastor, I'd like to lift up the Karsten family. Joel, my youngest son, his first cousin has passed, and his name is Joel Karsten as well. I wanted to make that distinction. It's not my son, it's his first cousin. But we, if we can lift that family in prayer. Absolutely. And Pastor, I would like to lift up one of Sherman's club members, Andre. We prayed for him last week. He um to be able to kick this COVID thing. And we found out a couple hours ago that he didn't make it. So prayers for his family. Amen. Mm. Absolutely praying for him. Amen. Lifted up Sister Stephanie, who is recovering from um, cancer treatments, still going through um, cancer treatments and praising God for uh, Dr. Rodney Carter, I believe has completed his and has been Amen. announced that he's cancer free in the name oh. of Jesus. Oh, We're just praising you, God Jesus. for that. Um, lifting, lifting up um, uh, people who are all over. Uh, Bishop Cox, he continues to lift up College Hill. We want to lift up him and Parenthood Ministries. They continue to support, him, support us. Um, his yes. wife and Reverend uh, Gloria Cox. Yes. Anyone yes. else before? Anyone else before Dr. Uh, Peters goes forward with our prayers? Yes, Pastor. I, uh, the name of the of the person in Colombia who was assassinated was Albero Suarez. Uh, he's a former combatant with FARC who has come over and become a, an advocate for peace and has been working with the Presbyterian Church in Colombia. So uh, his loss, along with all of those who are being assassinated uh, in Colombia, is a real, real loss to all of us. Amen. Amen. And we one are brothers person. and sisters. I have one more person. Yeah. And that is this person I do not know, but they have they have lifted me up to their music and in so many ways. And even when I even think about this, their song, something about the name Jesus, I get excited. Mm -hmm. So prayers for Rex Allen, who passed away today. Um, He's with Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There's no safer place to be but in his arms. It's those of us that are left behind that need the continued prayers. We lift up some people that have been in our service who have been struggling with homelessness um, or, or need financial help. So we're just praying uh, provisions for all of them and our brothers and sisters around the world, those that are on the coast that have been dealing with, um, already were recovering from the hurricanes to have another um, hit again this past Wednesday, I believe. And those who have lost so much due to the fires, uh, we lift them up as well. <laughs> Pastor, I would also ask that we uplift that the Holy Spirit cover this nation within the next few days as this nation goes to the polls yes that we that they be surrounded in protection yes and that we go through this election holy spirit enveloped and may god's will be done amen amen we'll be led in our uh prayers of the people by dr carolyn peters Praise the Lord, College Hill family and friends. Praise the Lord. As, as we go forth and pray for the people. 
Gracious and heavenly God, we are just so thankful. We're here to worship you today and to praise you, Lord, and give thanks for all the things you have done. All the prayers that have been lifted before you this morning, Lord. We just ask that you give us the strength and the courage to remember that you are always with us, whether we are near or far, that we can always go to you and that you will bring us the comfort, the peace and the joy that's everlasting. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. It's to that. It is first Sunday, or at least it will be by the time that you hear this. And so it's, we have an opportunity to share in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. And in remembrance, again, as we think about voting, we are reminded we are one body, all belonging to God. And so we just thank and praise God for this opportunity that not only for our nation to be reminded that we are part of one, one body, but across the world. Won't you join us as we prepare uh, to receive the Lord's Supper? Friends, this is a joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and from north and south and sit in the kingdom of God. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared. Amigos, esta es la fiesta jubiloso del pueblo de Dios. Nuestro Salvador nos invita a todos los que confiamos en él a participar en la fiesta que él ha preparado. Blessed is Jesus Christ our Savior. Jesus showed us what it means to love you with heart and soul and mind and strength and how to love our neighbors as ourselves. Remembering your goodness and grace, we offer ourselves to you with gratitude as we share this joyful feast. Bendito sea Jesucristo, nuestro Salvador. Jesús nos mostró que, que significa amarle con todo el corazón, el alma, la mente y toda nuestra fuerza. Y como amar al prójimo, como a nosotros mismos. Recordando tu bondad y gracia. Nos ofrecemos con gratitud mientras compartimos esta fiesta jubilosa. Most gracious and loving God, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon our bread, this bread and this cup, that you make us one in the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lead us to that holy place not made with human hands, where Christ our Savior has offered himself for our redemption and where we may live to worship you forever. Through the Lord Jesus Christ in the unity of the Spirit, we bless you, God of glory, now and forever. Dios de gracia y amor, derrama tu Espíritu Santo sobre nosotros y sobre este pan y esta copa. Haznos uno en el cuerpo y la sangre de Jesucristo, nuestro Señor. Llegamos a este lugar, no hecho con manos humanas, donde Cristo, nuestro Salvador, se ha, se ha ofrecido a sí mismo para nuestra redención, y donde podemos estar para adorarlo siempre. A través del Señor Jesucristo, en la unidad del Espíritu, te bendecimos, Dios de la gloria, ahora y para siempre. And now let us pray for God's will to be done on earth as Jesus taught us. We'll, enjoy, we'll invite you to pray with us together. Y ahora oremos para que se haga la voluntad de Dios en la tierra tal y como Jesús nos enseñó y oramos juntos. Our Father, Father nuestro, Father, who art que estás en los cielos, hallowed be thy name. Thy name. 
thy kingdom, thy kingdom venga tu reino, thy will be done, hágase tu voluntad, on earth, como en el cielo, as as y también en la tierra. Give us this day, el pan day. nuestro de cada día, danoslo hoy. And forgive us our debts, perdónanos nuestras deudas, como también perdonamos a nuestros deudores. And lead us not, no nos dejes caer en tentación, y no líbranos del mal. Que tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria. Por todos los siglos. Amén. Amén. It reminds me of Pentecost when we do that, praying together in different languages. Amén. <laughs> we are told and we know and we believe and we witness that the Lord Jesus on the night of his arrest, he took bread and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Sabemos, hermanos y hermanas, que el Señor Jesús, la noche en que fue entregado, tomó pan y después de dar gracias a Dios, lo partió y lo dio a sus discípulos diciendo, Toma, come. Este es mi cuerpo, que por ustedes es entregado. Hagan esto en memoria de mí. In the same way Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. De la misma manera tomó la copa, diciendo, Esta copa es símbolo de la nueva alianza sellada con mi sangre, derramada por ustedes para el perdón de los pecados. Siempre que le beban, Háganlo en memoria de mí. Y cada vez que comen de este pan y beben de este copa, esta copa, la muerte del Señor anunciamos hasta que Él regrese. If you haven't done so already, we invite you to break your bread and prepare your cup as we prepare to join together and, and partake of this together. Bueno, si no ha preparado su su pan y copa, entonces ahora es el, el momento de sostener su pan y copa. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us all eat of it. Este es el cuerpo de Cristo, el pan de cielo. Comamos todos de él. This is the blood of Christ. The cup of salvation, let us all drink of it. Esta es la sangre de Cristo, la copa de salvación. Bebamos de ella. Dr. Williams, shall we pray? Yes. Most bountiful God, we give you thanks for the world you have created, for the gift of life, and for giving yourself to us in Jesus Christ, whose holy life, suffering, and death, and glorious resurrection have delivered us from sin and death. We are your children, and yours is the glory, now and forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let God's people say, Amen. 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 And Amen. Generoso Dios, te damos gracias por el mundo que has creado, por el don de la vida, y por venir entre nosotros a través de Jesucristo cuya vida santa, sufrimiento, muerte 
y glorias, gloriosa resurrección nos ha liberado del pecado y de la muerte. Somos tus hijos y hijas. Tuya es la gloria, ahora y para siempre, a través de Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Y todos dicen, Amén. 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 Now, as we prepare to close the service, we, in, we invite you to remember that we are all bound together. We leave you with a charge and then a blessing that until we meet again, we will continue to be um, woven together in the garment of Christ. Let the majesty of the Father be the light by which you walk. The compassion of the Son be the love by which you walk. The presence of the Spirit be the power by which you walk. Que la majestad del Padre sea la luz por la que caminas. La compasión del Hijo sea el amor por el que caminas. Y la presencia del Espíritu Santo sea el poder por el que caminas. And I'm going to invite us, I, I'm, we didn't prepare a song exactly, but I think we're going to try a closing hymn. Um, but before the, we do that, I'm going to go ahead and, um, actually, I, I would like us to sing together if we can. Uh, Brother Al, what song do you think that will be? We're still not getting anything. They're talking, but we're not <laughs> getting anything. Okay, then I'm just going to try it again. No, they're lost to us right now. Okay. That's all right. Go with that. We can do go um, with the God. Um, I'm actually going to go with something that I think is just perfect for what we've just done. Amazing Grace. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go with the one verse, the one refrain. Amazing grace, how once again now as we prepare to leave from this place but never from the presence of god we we just pray that you are reminded that even though we are apart we are joined together in christ even when it seems like we're alone we're never alone because god is always with us we pray that you feel the love and presence of god wherever you are and that you share it with someone else Now unto him who was able to keep you from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power now and forevermore. And let the church say, amen. 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 Go amen. with God, everyone. Be Go blessed. with God. God with God. Thank you, everyone.